I'm gonna beat Pokemon Fire Red with only this Sandshrew because I hate Ash Ketchum. AJ is the first trainer in the anime to absolutely humble him. Can Sandshrew, my all-time favorite Pokemon, be the powerhouse that AJ had? Let's find out. And here we go. Don't want this garbage nor this thing over here. Uh, yeah, that's what we want. Gary wants to fight us, so we'll oblige and help turn his Bulbasaur into a salad with the power of Scratch. I'm gonna go through Viridian Forest, and that's gonna be pretty easy until I get to this guy, which I maybe Scratch will do a lot. Okay, so I gotta train on these Mankeys so I can have enough firepower to even begin to go against Brock. Then I take off my Macho Brace, so I've got a little bit of speed, and I start with the tactic that is going to get me through this run. Pocket sand. That's right, sand attack. I'm gonna throw sand in the opponent's faces for most of these battles. If you don't like these underhanded tactics, then please share away that I can do it legitimately and I'll give it a shot. Eventually Geodude succumbs to enough scratches. Now Onyx is tricky because we don't have access to a sprinkler system. I need to throw enough sand in his face that he doesn't bind me to death. Eventually, I get him down to enough that a critical scratch can take him out. And with that, we were able to get our boulder badge and we didn't even have to use a water wheel to do it. He gives me the TM Rock Tomb, which I use to absolutely annihilate the Pokemon on the very next route. I go through Zubat Tunnel version one, and then we fight against Misty. And Misty is a complete piece of cake, as we're about to see. Okay, so Misty is actually one of the fights that takes me a really long time to get through. This is partly due to the fact that it's faster than us, but if it'll use a Harden, then we can actually win with a crit or by throwing some sand in its face. Now, while Staryu is fast, Starmie is an absolute speed demon and it knocks me out quite a bit here. In fact, it knocks me out so much that I wasn't able to win for a really long time. I actually had to find some Venonats just so I could beef up my special defense Eevees so that I could actually win against Misty. Now I can come in and blind star you with enough sand attacks and then start my rock tomb strategies which will eventually make my sand shoe faster and that kind of matters until it starts to do this recovery nonsense. But with enough poison stings and rock tombs, I fight my way to Starmie again. I mean, now I just need to survive one hit with Starmie in order to know that this run is possible. And I do. With three HP, I'm able to throw some sand in its face and then, oh yeah, it's got one of those moves. Stupid. That always hits. So my sand attack strategy isn't always gonna work, but what I can do, if I found out that I got right to 10 HP, it would start to water pulse me and I could throw more sand in its face and rock tomb it so that I would be eventually faster than it. At that point, I broke into some poison stings to try to get some status effect on it. With enough cheap tactics and enough sand, I did eventually beat Misty. And at this point, Sandshrew started to try to evolve, but I said, no, thank you. And we face our rival. Now, you would think that our rival would go down to one rock tomb, but unfortunately he throws sand in our faces. And you know, then we, then we start to immediately miss because of course. We eventually knock it out and get to his Bulbasaur, which immediately puts us to sleep. Now we did wake up pretty early on this and that was pretty lucky because he does know Vine Whip. Abra's not a huge issue now because it only knows Teleport and his Rattata, we're just going to slash for a victory. I teach my Sandshrew Dig so that we can go and fight our rival again. Yeah, it's, it's pretty back to back with our rivals. As far as the big encounters go, we get pretty lucky with a couple of slashes here and its Sand Attack doesn't really do too much to our accuracy despite what we've done with Sand Attack on our end. But we actually got pretty lucky against his Ivysaur landing a critical hit immediately with our newly acquired Slash. Then we trounce on his Raticate, then we lose to Kadabra, who's faster than us now and knows more than just Teleport. So we have to go through the Pidgeot again, getting a Slash, and once again, his Ivysaur actually helps us out by missing a Poison Powder here, so we can knock it out with a couple of Slashes. Raticate comes in with a few Hyper Fangs that are a little bit annoying, but we do actually permadeath at this time and move on to his Kadabra, who decides to be silly with Disable, so we Slash it once, because it can't take a hit and beat our rival. I catch Oddish so I can use Cut and not waste it on my Sandshrew. And then I fight Surge. Uh, you, you know how this goes. I just dig my entire way to victory and it does not take me more than one try. And this particular run through Surge is not that hard. I go through Zubat Cave version 2.0 Dark Edition, and then I mosey on over to Celadon City, where I find the very well hidden Rocket Hideout and get uncomfortably close to Giovanni on the couch. Well, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable. 
He's going to throw Onyx, which I don't really understand how it fits in this office that we're currently fighting in, but he's going to harden, and that's not going to help him out too much as my attack is just going to overcome his hardens with digs and swifts. Next up is Rhyhorn, and thankfully it doesn't know Earthquake yet, so a couple of digs is all it's gonna take. Finally is Kangaskhan, which honestly does way more damage than I thought it would do, so I have to immediately start throwing some sand in its face. I get a lucky critical hit, and it almost kills me, but enough crits, and we can win. Next up is Erica, and her victory bell won't be that hard to beat, right? So yeah, I, I lost to I lost to Erica quite a bit. It turns out victory bell is just faster than us, so it was just hard to beat that. I did find out that at some points when I'm at at full health, he will try to poison me. So I pick up one of these peach berries and then I come back over here and I get a free round of sand attack, which ends up being huge because I need him to miss Giga Drain, which is a huge thing that hits most of the time. Luckily for us, he goes for Stun Spore. We come back with more sand attacks and he starts missing out the wazoo. So now I can finally start slashing our way to victory and we finish Victory Bell off with a dig. Luckily for us, we level up and we go straight into throwing sand into Vileplume's face because we are actually faster. He eventually paralyzes us, which unfortunately for us makes a big difference when we go to fight Tangela because this happens. Yeah, full para twice into a complete death. And then I have to do the same thing again to get through Victory Bell and then through Vileplume. And as long as I come out on top of the Vileplume fight with no status effects, I can slash and critical hit my way to victory. Next up, we find Gary in the Pokemon graveyard, supposedly there to bury his Raticate. I'm actually not that sad. Ivysaur is big on using Razor Leaf here, but if I can throw some sand in its face after surviving one time, then we can win. Thankfully, Razor Leaf doesn't have a 100% hit ratio, and I do eventually hit it with sand and then some slashes to knock it out. I do think his Gyarados is going to be a bigger deal than it is, but it doesn't know any water moves yet, so I can just sand attack and slash it. Hopefully it confuses itself and knocks itself out, which it does. Growlithe goes down to a dig and so does Kadabra, because again, it tries to disable me for some reason instead of just knocking me out confusion and still cannot take a hit. Good. I learn Aerial Ace as it's the only thing that I can use to fight these ghost Pokemon in the tower. I get trolled by Mr. Fuji who says, he wasn't even trapped there, and then I go to a ripoff known as the Safari Zone. I pick up someone's gold teeth, get Surf and Strength, and then we fight what I think is the coolest of the gym leaders in Koga. Now, Koga uses poison type Pokemon, which at the time though, when I was a kid, I thought that he used just ninja Pokemon or, or Pokemon that, that knew smoke screen, but no, he's a poison type user and he's kind of a little jerk with his hyper potions. I throw some sand in Coughing's face and get lucky with some self-destructs. Muck is gonna minimize. That would usually be the bane of our existence, but because we know Aerial Ace, which is a 100% hit rate, it doesn't take us too much longer to knock him out despite some hyper potions. I throw more sand in a face, we get almost knocked out again with the destruction and then wheezing happens. Wheezing is kind of annoying. With all of his sludges, at one point he survives on exactly one HP, then poisons us and I thought it was gonna be the end, but we're faster. So we hit him with an aerial ace and beat Koga for the soul badge. We go back into what is going to be another annoying fight against the guy who could have helped us with Team Rocket, but instead just waits in a weird spot to fight us. Now, Gary at this point has leveled up his Pidgeot, which actually took us quite a while. And then Venusaur kept on not missing his Razor Leafs. Pidgeot knows Feather Dance, which knocks down our hit rate a lot. So I have to pretty much rely on critical hits to get through Pidgeot so that I can have just enough HP to survive one Razor Leaf with 16 HP. I then throw sand in Venusaur's face and I die still because he did not want to miss Razor Leafs. I died to this about 45 times before I finally got Razor Leaf to miss. With enough sand, anything is possible. And then it turns out that I actually only needed one Aerial Ace with a crit to win, but I never even think about other moves getting crits besides Slash, which actually works on Gyarados because he still doesn't know any water moves. We kind of own up on Growlithe, but it does take us down to 42, which does make me a little bit nervous for Alakazam. We dig a couple of times and he uses Future Sight, which doesn't end up hitting us. And we walk away with a victory after 46 times of fighting him. I pick up my HM Yule known as Lapras, and then I fight Giovanni, who only has a couple of things that are either weak to ground or that I can abuse with critical hits and sand attack. Rhyhorn pretty much goes down, except for he hits us with a scary face, and we end up aerial acing after taking a pretty fortunate only two hit rock blast. Nino Queen should have gone down faster than it honestly did, but it got a double kick off, and we win going up to level 51. The manager of Sylph Cove gives us the power to capture God, and then we go fight Sabrina, whose Pokemon can't take a hit, but Mr. Mime throws up a barrier and makes it to where they can. I slash through all these Pokemon and then don't realize how much firepower Venomoth has, but I hang on with one, even though I don't have the move sturdy, I heal up and then face against 
Alakazam, who tries to set up on us, but only with future sight. So we end up being able to dodge it and win. She didn't see that coming. And in the anime, she should have because she had reality warping powers. They do one of the most pointless side quests in all of Pokemon history, grab the key to get into the gym that is locked even though Blaine is still inside it, and then y you know what happens here. It doesn't take us too long to honestly get through all of Blaine's Pokemon with a couple of digs. Sure, his Pokemon are faster, and Fire Blast and Fire Spin hit a lot harder than I really want them to, but it doesn't hit all the time, and because we have the power of sand, we make sure that he kind of loses. Now, admittedly, Arcanine was a little bit trickier because he's a beefy boy. He actually does quite a bit of damage with his takedowns, and we almost lose here because of takedown. But we get off a couple of digs and take it out with a critical hit. Well, I'm gonna need to pick up the TM Thief and then use our Godcatcher 9000 to catch the Zubat. Now, thankfully, I'm gonna try and pick up this fly here, and then we're gonna try and teach our Zubat to fly. Except for he can't. So I level him up to Golbat and then teach him Thief, and then he still can't learn fly, so whatever. But I do end up stealing this focus band, which is going to be key to our victory in facing Giovanni and the Elite Four. During training, I also learned the very important move, Sandstorm. Sandstorm is going to be a lifesaver because we have the ability Sand Veil, which allows us to have plus one evasiveness while Sandstorm is brewing. It doesn't do anything hardly to Giovanni's Pokemon because most of them are ground, but that doesn't matter because as long as they can't hit us or as long as there's a chance that they can't hit us, then I feel like I have enough chances of victory. Thankfully, they keep on missing and I, with a couple of lucky digs, some sand attacks, I eventually take all of Giovanni's Pokemon down. It only takes me a few tries. Next up though is our fight against Gary. So we do pick up Earthquake, we run into some problems. Namely his Venusaur again. It doesn't like to miss. And also his Pidgeot got weirdly strong. Sandstorm and and a couple of other things help us out, but it took us a long time to just to try to get through here. Eventually, we get Sand Attack off, and because we're plus one, we're able to hang on with the Focus Band because he still doesn't want to miss. I heal up, and then I start Earthquaking, hoping for an easy victory. Turns out, a lot of Gary's Pokemon are flying, so I can't use the powerful move that we just picked up, so I have to hope for Sand Attack misses. Luckily, the only water move that Gyarados picked up was Hydro Pump, and it's gonna miss. I power through his Rhyhorn with a few Earthquakes, and he tries to take down, but it doesn't actually work. He's got a couple more things. First off is his Growlithe, which hasn't evolved yet, but it does a lot of damage with Flame Wheel, surprisingly, even though our defense is still pretty high. We take it out with an Earthquake, and the last thing is his Alakazam, which is going to pose a big problem if we can't get it to miss. Thankfully, and miraculously, it misses two Psychics in a row for us to nail it with Earthquake. If it had hit that Psychic, honestly, this battle would have taken us way more tries, but as I stood, it only took us about 14 tries to beat it. I drop off all my useless Pokemon, and then we go to face Lorelei, who, I mean, she uses ice and water Pokemon. She beats me a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot. It took me over a hundred tries to beat this trainer. Now, let me say it like this. I'm showing you the successes. I lost a lot on some of these Elite Four battles. Some to small mistakes, some to just overpowering weaknesses. It would take way too long to show all of those, so I'll put a little death counter for the whole Elite Four so you know how long this took. And I did have to beep up and change around my EVs to even make it possible to get past Lorelei and Agatha, but even with that, it still took me forever to beat this thing. Eventually though, I was able to survive one surf from Dugong, set up my Sandstorm, which is gonna be a pretty pivotal part in all these battles, in order for me to have a chance at winning, I need to survive off of Focus Band and Sandstorm. So Focus Band helps me out with the Dugong, and then I get a couple of Earthquakes off in order to kill it. And then I face Cloyster, who's honestly pretty annoying because its hail makes it to where my Sandstorm disappears, so I have to get it out of the way. Then I have to heal up, hope that Slowbro uses just the right moves, set up my Sandstorm, and hope that it misses based off of one thing. I have to pretty much rely on Focus Band against Slowbro. As long as it hits one Surf, I don't win. I need Ice Punch to miss as well, and then hit it with an Earthquake, otherwise Jinx hits me with one Ice Punch and I just die. Lapras, on the other hand, can hit me with a Surf, and I will survive on 6 HP so that I can get a Sand Attack off and eventually take it down. This whole thing took me about 122 tries. Next up is Bruno, and honestly, this match, I thought that I would struggle a lot more because of how much Earthquake and, and strong moves and Ice Punch that everything might know, but I got through Bruno on my first try. All it took was a Sandstorm and some Earthquakes. 
Ghost. I did try to lower Hitmonchan's vision with Sand Attack, but because he's got Canine, it didn't work. So I did just waste that move there, which is honestly pretty important for this entire matchup because I do have limited ethers. Mega Kick misses, which is great because I think that knocks me out. And then I get hit with a Cross Chop, but it only took me one try to beat Bruno. Now, Agatha is actually the Pokemon trainer that I, I struggled against the most. First and foremost, because I didn't have a move to hit any of her Pokemon with. So I did have to switch out and, and relearn Aerial Ace in order to hit any of her ghost type Pokemon. Then I have to set up Sandstorm and hope that hit their Pokemon just start missing. Their, their special attack is out of this world and Sandshrew's special defense just cannot keep up with it. Go back to annoying, but here is what made me lose so many fights. Haunter. Haunter uses this annoying move called Curse, which makes me lose a quarter of my HP at every single turn, which is annoying in and of itself, but it's also annoying when you fare to the fact that Gengar and all of her other Pokemon just seem like stallers. They just keep on stalling out the match, and I only have so many moves. I eventually got PP stalled on a bunch of these matches, so I had to try and time it just right to where I could finally win. Eventually, with enough missed hypnosis, I can hit Gengar with Aerial Ace a few times, then heal up, then go back, then hit it with more, and then she uses full restores. I I essentially have to try to get critical hits on Gengar, and then I try running away, which doesn't work, so I full restore. And then I, I have to hope that I win with Earthquake here, or I get hit with an Iron Tail that almost takes me out, and I finally get onto Lance. Now, Lance did take a while because, you know, he's the Dragon-type trainer, but he's also a Flying-type trainer, pretty much. I mean, with Dragonite and Gyarados and Aerodactyl, both three three of his five Pokemon having the Flying subtype, it makes, it, it makes this challenge incredibly difficult because I can't use Earthquake on a single one of them. Aerodactyl may be the bane of my existence, but with enough focus band saves and sandstorm attacks, I eventually wind my way through victory. It just took forever. This Aerodactyl made me lose the run about 102 times just on its own. His other Pokemon aren't as bad because once they start thrashing and raging around, they are outraging around, they'll get on. Now this did happen to where I was at one HP already and I got a focus band save, which I didn't think was possible, but it turns out it's possible like 0.02% of the time. Just kind of worked out. I do need to sand attack here, hope that he outrages, and then again, with, with his outrage Pokemon, it's a little bit easier because they do eventually hit themselves in confusion, and that makes the, the challenge go a little bit faster, and it, it makes it to where Lance is a little bit easier. Somewhere along the line, I thought that I needed to heal up entirely in my fight with Lance before I fought Gary because I didn't remember that there was space in between the fights. So I use a rare candy, level it up one time, and then face off against Gary. Now, Gary took me a total of 112 times to beat. I'm actually just gonna play you my winning match with very few edits to show you exactly what it took and the exact type of luck that it takes to win one of these matches.
At this moment, AJ would have been so proud. I can't believe we actually beat Fire Red with just the Sand Shrew. But don't stop there. Watch me lose my actual mind on this ChatGPT randomized Nuzlocke. 